a video speech <coughs> by a very young and dynamic leader from Baluchistan. Um, Carla Tagal again, my one of my favorite journalists. <coughs> I wish uh, she was here today. Uh, she had written a very interesting book called <coughs> uh, The Wrong Enemy, in which she said the U.S. attack on Afghanistan was totally uncalled, uncalled for, and the real enemy was, in fact, Pakistan. So I think she's one of the few Americans who identify what is the real problem. So Ms. Uh, uh, Gall wrote about Abraham Dag Bukti, who's the president of the Baruch Republican Party, a successor of uh, Nawab Akbar Khan Bukti, groomed by the elder statesman for a role in politics among so many of his sons and grandsons. Ramdak Bukti, according to Kala Tagore, is a slim figure in a dark suit. He could pass for a banker in the streets of Geneva. But in truth, he is a resistance leader in exile, a player in an increasingly ugly independence war within Pakistan. According to Carla Tagore, uh, Nawab Brahmdak Bukti, along with his family, moved about 18 times over 18 months when they left Pakistan to go to <coughs> Afghanistan first, in exile. There, the family became the target of repeated suicide bomb attacks by the Taliban and Al-Qaeda militants. The family believes these militants were sent <coughs> by the most well-known organization called the ISI. At least one bomb attack in upscale residential Kabul neighborhood of Wazir Akbar Khan was specifically aimed at Mr. Bukti, according to Western diplomat, according to a Western diplomat and an Afghan intelligence official, writes Kabir Tagore. The manner of his grandfather's death his call for political opposition to the government and his youth have won Braham Dag broad support beyond his own Bukti tribe among the educated Baluch middle class and student movements, including journalists like myself. I call myself journalist as I have not been pushed out of Pakistan. I, I love journalism. Uh, and, uh, in every district. He has a wide following all over Baluchistan. I can vouch the youth love him so much that when he sports a beard, all of Baluchistan youths grow a beard. <laughs> and when he shaves, the youths follow suit. I, sh I should have met him in 2009, three years after he went to Afghanistan. But finally, I came to know him in the last three months, since June. Got an excellent team of young, disciplined uh, Baluch youths dedicated to the freedom idea. Very respectful of elders. This is what I always thought a decent Baluch would be. So he has got a very decent team around him. My friend will show his uh, speech. Good morning. I thank uh, you for asking me to speak on the 10th martyrdom anniversary of Nawab Akbar Khan Bukti, who was an elder Balochistan statesman and former governor and chief minister of Balochistan. He was my biological grandfather and was also the father of Baloch nation. I thank Ambassador Hussein Haqqani, Mr. Peter Techo, Arif Jamal, 
and all those who are here for their kind presence. Thank you for being here to remember and pay tribute to Shaheed Nawab Akbar Bukhti for his struggle and sacrifice for a better future of Baloch nation. Ten years ago, today, Pakistan Army brutally assassinated one of the greatest friends of the civilized world and the leader of a secular Baloch people who are uh, the only natural allies of the Western world in a region ridden with religious extremism and terrorism. He started a struggle which is not only for a better and bright future for his people, but also for lasting peace and stability in the region. Shaheed Nawab Akbar Bukhti laid the foundations of the Baloch movement with his struggle and great sacrifice. Nations are known by their leaders, those who they choose to represent them and lead them out of the darkness and suffering to a peaceful and bright future. Shaheed Nawab Akbar Bukhti was our uh, elder leader who devoted his life to the betterment of the Baloch future and the aim of his life was to see the Baloch people as a free and prosperous nation. Nawab Akbar Bukhti and the sacrifices of the Baloch martyrs have put the Baloch movement in a position where it has become impossible for oppressive Pakistani state to crush it or stop it from reaching its goal of an independent Balochistan, no matter how much force they use. Thousands of Baloch youth, children, women and elders have been killed as a result of state aggression. Baloch political activists are abducted, killed and dumped almost on a daily basis. Ambassador Power, during her activist years, had a reputation for giving voice to the voiceless. I really wished she had spoken out on the crimes against humanity and war crimes committed by Pakistan on the people of Balochistan. However, I will still thank Ambassador Power as she tweeted when liberal Karachi activist Sabine Mahmood was killed in April last year by Pakistani secret services. They did not want her to host an event on victims of enforced disappearances in Balochistan and killed her when she defied them. Pakistani army and intelligence services want to give away the Gwadar port to China against the interests of the Baloch people and against the interests of forces of global democracy and freedom. This is the most serious threat uh, facing the Baloch people and the region today. China wants to take away Gwadar as part as part of its strategy of string of pearl, naval bases on the rim of the Indian Ocean. Pakistani crimes against humanity are a shocker for the global community. Execution-style extrajudicial killings, arbitrary detentions, torture, kill and dump, and uh, burying in mass graves have become routine. Burning of entire villages, killing livestock, use of aerial bombardments, Poison gases have all become routine issue amid Pakistani press blackout. During the last five years, large numbers of Baloch ethnic journalists fell prey to Pakistani killing machine. Balochistan is also the world capital of enforced disappearances where 25,000 people have gone missing. As many as 6,000 people were killed and dumped in the last five years. Let me tell you. The winds of change are blowing across South Asia and Southwest Asia. I am thoroughly indebted to the leader of the world's largest democracy, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, for openly condemning Pakistan for its atrocities in Balochistan. Mr. Modi also called for the freedom of Balochistan from the ramparts of, his, of the historic Red Fort. Prime Minister Modi has acted to fulfill his international role of responsibility to protect commonly called R2P under the new norms of international law. States do have the right to intervene by all possible means when a helpless people, in the case the Baloch of Balochistan, are subjected to war crimes, crimes against humanity and are facing a genocidal situation. The right to humanitarian intervention, uh, intervention as a concept was born out of the tragedies that befell Rwanda and the Balkans a quarter century ago. The expression responsibility to protect was drafted by the International Commission on Intervention and State Sovereignty, ICISS. The report of the ICISS proposed that when a state fails to protect its people, 
either because of lack of ability or because of a lack of willingness, the responsibility shifts to the broader international community. There is a collective international responsibility to authorize military intervention in the event of genocide and other large-scale killing, ethnic cleansing and serious violations of humanitarian law. As such, I will welcome political, moral and military help from secular democracies for the people of Balochistan. Thus, Prime Minister Modi acted in the spirit of R2P concept when he talked about highlighting human rights violations in Balochistan from the ramparts of the historic Red Fort of Delhi on the Independence Day of India. It is the duty of United States as leader of the free world to echo the call of Prime Minister Modi for, free, uh, uh, for freedom of Balochistan. US and India must work hand in hand with the freedom-loving forces of Balochistan to prevent Chinese imperial designs in the warm waters of the uh, Baloch Gulf. The US and Western world needs to support the freedom struggle of secular Baloch people in order to defeat the evil designs by China and Pakistan in the region. I appeal to the US administration and lawmakers to follow suit. If India is the world's largest democracy, the US is the world's most powerful democracy. I am sad that neither President Obama nor Vice President Joe Biden ever mentioned anything about extrajudicial killings and gross and uh, human rights violations in Balochistan in their nearly eight years in US government. I would still like to appeal to President Obama, Vice President Biden and Ambassador Power that it is never too late. I hope the new US, uh, I hope the new US President, whoever he or she may be, President Donald Trump, or Madam Hillary Clinton will turn a new leaf on Balochistan. Like the rest of the world, Balochistan is under threat of terrorism. Pakistan is an enabler of terrorism. American leaders must understand Balochistan is situated in an area of vital US interests as the warm waters of the Gulf washes the 700 mile long coastline of Balochistan. For far too long, U.S. arms and ammunition have been used against the secular people of Balochistan. The concept of end use of U.S. weapons should uh, be a matter of concern of every American. The most important issue here is the U.S. has an excellent law called the Leahy Law. I urge the U.S. government to uphold the Leahy Law uh, and punish the ISI, military intelligence and frontier corps for committing Tsunami of human rights violations and throwing the Geneva Convention to the wind in Balochistan. Just last month, during a hearing at the Congress, former diplomat Ambassador Zalme Khalidzad called for sanctions against Pakistan. I think this is an excellent idea and I fully endorse it. I ask my American friends to think that while the army generals were busy in military operation against my grandfather and the Baloch people at another part of Pakistan in the city of Abbottabad, the very same uh, army generals were working to provide a safe sanctuary to the worst enemy of United States, Osama bin Laden. In the eyes of Pakistani state, bin Laden was a saint for killing Americans, while my grandfather was a sinner as he wanted to defend the right of the Baloch people of Balochistan. My grandfather became suspect of Pakistani state because of his close friendship with Ambassador Robert Oakley and his ideas that matched with the US policies in the region. In addition to the US, I also call upon NATO countries and Israel to help defend human lives in Balochistan by upholding R2P. Here I like to say I am indebted to members of the Congress Dana Roha Barker and Brad Sherman who are both from the great state of uh, California for speaking out against Pakistani injustices in Balochistan. I am also indebted to uh, Tea Party members for fully supporting the idea of a free Balochistan. One of the founders of modern India, Mahatma Gandhi said, they may torture my body, break my bones, even kill me, then they will have my dead body but not my obedience. This was exactly Shaheed Nawab Akbar Bukti's message to Pakistan 10 years ago.
This is also the message of every Baloch to the Rook uh, terrorist Pakistan today. In con conclusion, I also again thank Prime Minister Modi for speaking out in favor of Baloch uh, people. I hope the US President, either Obama or his successor, will help us and enable me to thank them too. In the end, I pay tribute to Shaheed Nawab Akbar Bukti and take the war to continue his struggle for freedom of Balochistan. Long live Balochistan. Thank you very much.